The most well-known event in the Gears of War universe to the humans of Sera was a dark day. It was the beginning of humanity's supposed doom, Emergence Day. It was the emergence of a new war-torn world, with over a quarter of the total human population dying on the very first day. So I'm your host Abs, and in this video I'll be explaining the lore and backstory behind Gears of War's Emergence Day. The event that started it all for this franchise, so drop a like for the humans of Sarah, and if you do enjoy the video, consider subscribing for more juicy lore videos. Now then, Emergence Day. So Emergence Day was also known as E-Day, so I'll also be referring to it as E-Day throughout the video. E-Day was a swift, full-scale, coordinated and unprecedented planet-wide assault on the surface of Sarah, initiated by the Locust Horde. The Locust emerged and deployed in nearly every single major human city on the surface of Sarah, attacking and killing humans, regardless of race, age or gender. There were massive casualties everywhere the Locust arrived. The Locust Horde were not only a force of nature, they were more stronger and aggressive than humans, and they had an army of war beasts at their disposal. Their attacks and dominance were of textbook military invasion, so they were far from mindless beasts. In fact, many high-ranking leaders of the Locust Horde were considered to be geniuses in terms of military strategy, easily disposing of organised cog resistance. In the days before the Locust emergence, an epidemic of earthquakes and tremors were reported across Sera, puzzling scientists and journalists. After the first emergence, initial reports by the press and news media attested that grey monsters were emerging from the underground and slaughtering civilians, as told by surviving witnesses. In the early hours of Emergence Day, many believed that this was an elaborate hoax or promotion for a new sci-fi film. Others, who took the threat more seriously, initially believed that the Pendulum Wars had started again, or that the Grazny were attacking, until Chairman Thomas Daliel made an announcement that a new and foreign enemy was attacking the surface from the Hollow, which was an underground tunnel network beneath the surface of Sarah. One of the first cities to have reports of an unknown enemy attacking was Janamont, where the death toll would reach over 100,000. Images of the massacred on the Janamont Highway were shown on news networks across Sera, and Janamont also held a large army base within the city. The battle was personally led by the Locust General Ram and Cantor Scourge of the Locust Horde. After the eradication of the Janamont base, the Locust forces moved into the city and began slaughtering civilians. Among other major cities attacked was the capital city of Afera. However, a natural bedrock of granite, the Jacinto Plateau, spared many cities in Tyrus from the scourge of the Locust Horde, namely Jacinto City. While Afera was attacked due to natural fissures in the bedrock, as well as the subway and sewage tunnels offering access to the city, the COG managed to fill access points with gas and cement, and was successful in blocking the Locust out of Afera, as well as other cities on the plateau. Other locations on Sera were spared due to natural defences as well, Islands such as the South Islands, the Lesser Islands chain including Vectus and Azora were spared due to trenches and difficulty digging under the oceans. As for the mainland, all major cities outside the Jacinto Plateau were attacked and destroyed by the Locust Horde. The Republic of Garaznia, which was the only UIR country to not surrender, fell on Emergence Day to General Khan with the aid of the Shibboleth. Other countries once belonging to the UIR including Vaskar, had fell to the Locust Horde. But Emergence Day would eventually end and the Locust Horde would continue advancing across Sera, destroying everything and killing everyone in their path. Shortly after Emergence Day, a census across Sera revealed that billions, specifically 25% of the entire human race was killed in the initial onslaught of the Locust Horde. Millions more were declared missing, with people either lost in the chaos their corpses not found, or many being captured by the Locust Horde. The rumours of the missing since E-Day were ranged from the Locust eating humans to the Locust taking prisoners. But in reality, the Locust did capture millions of humans. Many of the captured were used by the Locust scientist Ukon. Another major use was enslaving humans into labour camps. Humans were also used to feed the Locust creatures, such as the blood mounts. And due to the Locust's hatred, the enslaved humans were put through various methods of torture, which was known as processing. 
which resulted in either lobotomy or death. Because of the horrors experienced in the aftermath of Emergence Day, the survivors believed those who were killed on E-Day were fortunate enough to not witness what Sarah had become. And so the saying among the survivors on Sarah was created, the lucky ones died on E-Day. Emergence Day was such a significant event in the history of mankind that the age-old calendar system was abolished in favour of a year marking system that involved counting the years before and after Emergence Day to mark an event. So it was split into BE meaning before emergence and AE meaning after emergence. The year of emergence was in the year 5992 but this was later designated as the year 0 with events before E-Day 0 BE and events after E-Day known as 0 AE. Now let's look at the backstory behind Emergence Day and the events that led up to this horrific event in Sarah's history. Now the Locust lived in the Hollow. Ever since the Mount Kadar laboratory uprising where Queen Mira had led her children, the Locust, into the underground tunnel networks of Sarah, the Hollow. They gained their independence, built their own civilization, repopulated their people and used the Hollow creatures as transportation, equipment and weapons. They began to thrive as a civilization until they encountered problems of their own, the Lambent. So let's cast our eyes to the year 7 BE, which is 7 years before Emergence Day. Members of the Locust Horde began becoming infected with Lambency, which possessed and mutated the infected to kill or infect all living organisms around it. So the Lambent were a race of semi-sentient mutants made up of any living organism infected by emulsion. Lambency is caused by constant exposure to emulsion and has the ability to subvert and mutate its host, robbing them of their free will and transforming them into a mindless, heartless killing machine with no other goal but to spread the infection. But this was all caused by emulsion, a parasitic fungal organism that appeared as a naturally occurring, luminescent, highly volatile liquid. This was found in the hollow on Sarah, where the locust had actually made their own civilization. But the humans commonly refined emulsion into a fuel source. And as we know, humans love to go to war over energy sources, and so it was the most sought after resource on the planet. The countries under the coalition of ordered governments that possessed an abundance of emulsion reserves soon found themselves at war with those nations who were not as fortunate now under the political regime of the Union of Independent Republics. This was a conflict known as the Pendulum Wars, and the Pendulum Wars became a global conflict that would last for 79 years, with millions dead, and the Pendulum Wars would end 6 weeks before Emergence Day. But 7 years before Emergence Day, underground in the hollow, the Locust engaged in the Lambent War, due to the epidemic of the Lambent. The war caused considerable casualties in the Locust, and they were losing territory in the hollow to the Lambent. Meanwhile, on ground level, in 7 BE, the humans of Sarah were still engaged in the Pendulum Wars, being 72 years into the war, with an end almost nowhere in sight. So, could Emergence Day have been prevented? Did the humans have previous knowledge of the Locust's existence prior to E-Day? Well, in 9 BE, so 9 years before Emergence Day, Biologist Dr. Elaine Phoenix, who was actually the mother of Marcus Phoenix, was studying the mutations of rock shrews in the inner hollow when she discovered the locust horde. In her journal, she studied them and she planned to make an announcement on their existence. However, Dr. Phoenix was found by the locust horde and executed. However, four years later, in 5 BE, Professor Adam Phoenix, Dr. Phoenix's husband, followed the tracks of his late wife. Professor Phoenix met with Queen Mira, who revealed that her people were being killed or infected by the Lambent. Queen Mira expressed her plans to invade and colonize the surface in order to evade the Lambent. Professor Adam Phoenix promised to help aid in her research to cure Lambency, to keep the Locust underground and from committing genocide. However, Adam Phoenix was called on by the Coalition of Ordered Governments to prepare the Hammer of Dawn which was an orbital laser beam weapon, a weapon of mass destruction, in order to end the pendulum wars against the Union of Independent Republics. 
Adam Phoenix also discovered that nearly all biological cures would fail against the lambent mutagen, and other physical measures that would kill the lambent would also harm the locust horde. Professor Phoenix was successful in completing the Hammer of Dawn and was used to end the war against the UIR, so most of Sarah was celebrating the end of the war. But in early 0 BE, underground, the Lambent War had reached a crucial stage in which a promising local soldier, Voldram, had the same desires as Queen Mira to invade the surface. Arranging a coup against the High General Uzil Srak at the time, Voldram expressed his belief in the futility of the Lambent War and the future that they could have on the surface. Queen Mira then promoted Voldram to Uzil, so he became her new general and revealed that she as well had been planning the attack on the humans. So then Queen Mira and Uzil Ram then began to strategize their emergence. Queen Mira had ultimately lost faith in Professor Phoenix, more of her people were dying and the locusts grew impatient. They were losing more outposts in the hollow and so she revisited her plans to launch her army onto the surface alongside her new general, General Ram. Their plan involved to strike against all major cities on Sarah, especially capital cities and those with substantial military or industrial involvement. In order to secure occupation of the city, cedars were used to ink the skies with nemesists to create krill storms, allowing the krill to kill all humans in a city during the daylight. After eradicating all military and civilian presence, the locust would be able to occupy a city and strip it for resources and weapons. Fueling the motives to destroy humanity came from Queen Mira's hatred of humans for imprisoning, experimenting, torturing the locust, forcing them underground and for the supposed murder of her infant daughter. She feared that humans would not accept the locust and attempt to control or kill them if she revealed themselves. Her motives were also caused by humanity's failure to assist the locust. As Queen Mira employed Professor Adam Phoenix to cure the lambency, but he was unable to produce one. She saw the locust as a superior race, that the humans were inferior, and so that Sarah should be claimed by the locust horde. The locust war would begin, as the locust emerged on E-Day, with humanity's and Sarah's fate on the line, in a war that would go on to last 17 years. So there you have it guys, there's emergent state in the Gears of War universe explained. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like and it would mean a lot to me if you consider subscribing if you did enjoy the video. You can also check out my lore playlists on my channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time.